It is a privilege for me. It really is a privilege to join with uh, top federal officials, members of the bench and the bar, federal, state, and local law enforcement and corrections officers, jail and prison administrators, uh, victims, prosecutors, former defendants, and advocacy organizations as we examine, discuss, and ultimately work to improve the state of pretrial justice in America. Today, after decades of study, analysis, and cooperation, there's no doubt that compared to Attorney General Kennedy's time, current pretrial release and diversion programs are not only more effective, they are more just. And yet, serious problems as well as significant inefficiencies remain. Across the country, nearly two-thirds of all inmates who crowd our county jails at an annual cost of roughly nine billion taxpayer dollars are defendants awaiting trial. Two-thirds of all min inmates are awaiting trial. Now, many of these individuals are nonviolent, non-felony offenders charged with crimes ranging from petty theft to public drug use. And a disproportionate number of them are poor. Now, the reality is, is that it doesn't have to be this way. Almost all of these individuals can be released and supervised in their communities and allowed to pursue or maintain employment and participate in educational opportunities and their normal family lives without any risk of endangering their fellow citizens or fleeing from justice. D.C. Police Chief Kathy Lanier spoke of the importance of the D.C. Pretrial Services Agency in making this approach to pretrial release decision making, which does not rely at all on money, work. It's kind of genetically ingrained in police officers to do a couple of things. Um, one is criticize everybody else in the justice system. <laughs> right? There's some cops here. They know what I'm talking about. Uh, two is, is to have the mentality that uh, hold everybody pretrial. They're all guilty if we arrested them. <laughs> so I, I want to kind of dispel that myth a little bit. And I think that we've evolved somewhat. And I think part of what has caused that evolution for me 21 years working here in DC is having the uh, privilege of working with the pretrial service agency. And so what's been so important for us over the past five years is that we've reduced violent crime and homicide here in Washington last year to the lowest level we've seen of homicide since 1963. Um, having been the murder capital of the world when I started, that's a big accomplishment. And I credit a lot of that to the work that's been done by the pretrial service agency. You can't just create it and let it go on its own. Everybody has to collaborate and they have to be committed to it and you have to have good committed people that are, that are working in the system. With federal, state, and municipal resources in high demand and in short supply, the simple truth is that government can't solve these problems alone. We need to engage key partners and innovators across the country to guide our efforts to bring an, an expanded network of stakeholders to the table and to push for responsible reform. So to be blunt, we need your expertise, we need your ideas, and we need your help. Our discussions must be grounded in rational and transparent risk assessments built on evidence-based tools and predicated on the presumption of innocence, but ever mindful of the need to keep our neighborhoods safe. Now, each of you can play a key role in this effort. You can help us find ways to support the growth of pretrial service agencies and diversion programs in the more than 300 jurisdictions where they already exist and encourage their creation where they do not. You can fight to ensure that for every defendant who enters the system, our judges have access to the best information possible, along with a range of supervision and service options, as well as sound guidelines to inform their decisions. And you can broaden our engagement with other experts on the ground, raising the profile of this work and igniting, once again, a movement for meaningful change. We still have much more to do. This symposium marks an important step forward in what I know and what I pledge will be an ongoing conversation about how we can achieve safe and fair pretrial release and diversion practices in our communities and in so doing make our justice system both more effective and more efficient. More information about the National Symposium and pretrial justice may be found on this website.